reading today comes from the book of Romans, chapter 5, the first 11 verses. <coughs> Therefore, we are justified by faith. We have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we obtained access to this grace in which we stand. And we boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. And not only that, but we also boast in our sufferings. Knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope. And hope does not disappoint because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. For while we were still weak at the right time, Christ died for the ungodly. Indeed, rarely will anyone die for a righteous person. Though perhaps for a good person, someone might actually dare to die. But God proves his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Much more surely then, now that we have been justified by his blood, we will be saved through him from the wrath of God. For if while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his son, much more surely, having been reconciled, we will be saved by his life. But more than that, we even boast in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have not now received reconciliation. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God. And let us go to God in prayer. Gracious God be with us this day. May the words that we hear be your words. And may we have the courage to put your words into practice now and always. Amen. In 1977, my brother and I went to see a movie called Star Wars. It was good. In 1980, we went again to see The Empire Strikes Back. And in 1983, we watched Return of the Jedi. I liked the movies. I saw them in the theater. Uh, every year they came out, I went when they were in the movies, and I went and saw them, and I'm glad that I did. But I never really bought into the hype. Never went to the conventions and dressed up. Never had lightsabers. Never used Luke Skywalker shampoo, <laughs> and it actually exists. Never had Darth Vader pajamas. In 1999, when George Lucas released the first three movies in the storyline, I again went to those films and didn't get caught up in the mania that swept across the country. In 2009, two things happened to change all of that. First, I had a five-year-old son who loved Star Wars. And second, in January of that year, I had a surgery that kept me out of work for six weeks. Marcy bought me a book entitled Star Wars, The New Essential Chronology. She thought that I could read it during the day while I recover, and then Colin and I could bond over the book at night. This worked great, almost too great. I went from being that casual watcher of the movies to being this guy that, we, that knows way too much information about Star Wars. For the record, I still don't go to conventions. I still don't have any lightsabers in my cover. I've never used Luke Walker, Skywalker shampoo. And as far as wearing Star Wars jammies, I would kindly ask that you all mind your own business. <laughs> I know things about Star Wars that I wish I didn't know. I know things that I never wanted to know. I know things that I wish I could forget. <laughs> I learned in-depth things about Obi-Wan Kenobi and Mace Windu and Yoda. And I have secret information about Jabba the Hutt. <laughs> I discovered that this whole universe revolves around Anakin Skywalker. And in this world, there is a prophecy about a chosen person who will destroy the Dark Lord and bring back balance to the Force. Because Anakin had the highest count of midichlorians in his blood, he was thought to be this chosen one. The midichlorians are microscopic beings that reside in all life forms, and that's how we connect to the Force. You see how sad this is? This is I learned that a Jedi doesn't buy his lightsaber at Target or make it at Disney World like the nine we have in the house. A Jedi goes on a long pilgrimage to make his own lightsaber. 
He goes into solitude on a high mountain and finds, finds his own kyber crystals. That's the energy force in the lightsaber that makes it all work. The baddies always use red crystals for some reason, and the goodies use blue or green, and one Jedi even has a purple lightsaber. I learned that the kyber crystal is the most powerful substance in all of the universe. It will cut through anything except for one thing. <coughs> Do you know what that one thing is? It's another kyber crystal. That's why the lightsabers bang together when they fight. I even know the answer to the most puzzling question about the Star Wars history. Everybody knows that there are nine stories in this saga, and when George Lucas released them, he showed number four in the series first. So he showed four, five, and six, and then in 1999 he showed one, two, and three, and then in 2016 he showed number seven. And I, I know definitively why this was done, why he decided to do all this in this backwards fashion. And I'll tell you, but you can't laugh when I tell you the answer, because I have to do it this way by order of my children. The reason that Star Wars movies are shown out of order and backwards is because, in charge of planning, Yoda was. <laughs> the point of all of this is to say that life is a progression. When I was a boy, Star Wars was a thing to see for me, and it was nothing more. But through my relationship with my son and through the, through the franchise effect that this movie has had on our culture, it has been a much bigger and important part of our lives. What used to be a movie for me became a way for me to bond with both of my children. And what we learn in today's scripture is similar. We see that life is a progression, and as we live it the best way we can, certain things build on one another, and all of that shapes the way that we live and guides what we do. Paul begins this passage by talking about justification and grace. He says, therefore, since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained access to this grace in which we stand. Grace can be defined as the freely given, unmerited favor and love of God. And we are justified in that grace because when God forgives our sins, our record is wiped clean. It is as if the sin has never taken place. We are justified by what God has done for us, and that means we are made right and we are in a right relationship with God. We don't earn this relationship. We don't have to prove our worth to God. And this justification is not conditional. It is freely given. Have you ever wonder why? Why does God sacrifice his son for us? Why do we receive a free gift of grace? Why don't we have to earn our salvation? Why does God forgive our sins, not once, not twice, but as scripture says, 70 times seven? Why does God go to all that trouble and care for us? The answer is simple, because loves us, he does. Oh, sorry, I slipped back into Yoda there for just, for just a quick split second. The most wonderful thing about God is that he loves us with a deep and special kind of love. A love that accepts us just the way we are with all of our habits and our faults and our discrepancies. A love that only ever seeks out the best for us. A love that can never stop loving. A love that loves us with a breath and a depth that only God can provide. Because of that love, we can rejoice in God's glory. We can rejoice in our sufferings, for in time of suffering, God will still be there, and God's love will see us through. Love does not insulate us from pain or trouble or sickness. God does not insulate us from the unfolding events, the emergencies, and the tragedies of our lives and of our love. If having God and love in our lives meant that no suffering would take place, I am almost positive there would be a lot more Christians in the world today. God and his love for us empowers us to overcome what we all must face. 
Life gives to us that progression that allows us to carry on and to win the prize. A three-step building block process that allows us to grow and to thrive and to overcome in our sufferings. Step one is suffering produces endurance. The first thing we need to understand that as Christians we suffer. Life can be difficult and at every given moment we can be faced with poverty, we can be put in danger, we can deal with illness and surgeries and accidents and natural disasters and so on and so forth. We can also suffer when we deal with pressure and failure and persecution and humiliation and loneliness. In suffering there is triumph because, as Paul tells us, suffering produces endurance. Endurance means fortitude or strength, but it's a special kind of strength. Endurance is the strength to not only make a choice, but to see that choice through. Endurance is a strength not only to see the path, but have the courage to take it. Endurance is the strength to tolerate our circumstances. It is the strength to actively overcome Endurance is the strength to trust in God and handle whatever comes to us. Step two is endurance produces character. Character is not referring to someone's personality as much as it is referring to what happens to that personality through endurance. When suffering is met with endurance, a person's character emerges stronger and purer and better than it was before. The Greek word for character was a word that was used to describe metal that had been passed through the refiner's fire so that everything impure had been purged from it. When we persevere and our strength of character is revealed, it deepens our trust in God and it gives us a greater confidence for the future. Step three is character produces hope. Hope is to believe, to desire, and to trust. When people go through difficult times, it is hope that allows them to see that rainbow at the end of the storm. Hope keeps our spirits up when life drags us down. Hope allows us to see good when all that is in front of us is bad. And hope keeps us hanging on until those storms of life pass. And hope is not an iffy thing. It can be, you can say, I hope I win the lottery. You can say, I hope tonight we have chocolate ice cream for dessert. But when we're talking about this hope in Scripture, we're talking of that solid hope that is rooted in our faith in God. When we have hope, nothing is lost. When we have hope, we cannot be disappointed. When we have hope, there is always that light in God at the end of the tunnel. God pours out his love to us, and we in turn can rejoice in the Holy Spirit, and God loves us with that everlasting love that is backed up with his everlasting power. The message for today is simple. God loves you. That's what Paul, in his own special way, is conveying to us in the book of Romans and in these verses in particular. God loves us, and that love will see us through our most joyous times, and that love will be with us when we are at the pits of our despair. It feels like it's time for a story <laughs> for me. So I'm going to come away because I want to be able to see everybody. It's about as good as I can get. So, there was a boy, and this boy happened to be born blind. And he would go uh, into the big city every day, and he would sit on the steps of a large building, and he would have a guitar in his hand, and the open case on the ground, and a sign next to him that said, I am blind, please help. And he would play his guitar throughout the day, hoping to get some sympathy and hoping to get some money. This was his way to earn a living and this way to give back his gift to society. And he would do this every day. And we'll talk about one day in particular, he's playing his guitar. It's about 10 in the morning, he's received a, a fistful of change that's in his guitar case. And a man walks by and he takes a couple of dollars, he puts it in the case, 
And he takes his sign and he turns it over and he writes on the back of the sign and then he puts it back up for everyone to see and he goes about his day. About an hour after the man had left, the boy's day starts to change. People say hello to him. People thank him for his music. People stop and introduce themselves to him. Some even have conversations with him and get to know him. And it's just the most wonderful day in this young man's life. And by the end of the day, the open guitar case on the ground is full of cash. More money than he has ever made. And as he's packing up at the end of the day, he recognizes the man coming back. He recognizes his footsteps. He recognizes the smell of his cologne. And he says to him, excuse me, sir, are you the one that changed my sign? This has been the most incredible day I've ever had. Would you please tell me what you wrote? And the man said, I, I didn't mean to do anything wrong. I, I was only trying to help. You had written, I am blind. Please help. I wrote, today is a beautiful day. A day that I can serve. A day that I can be grateful. A day that even though I cannot see, I know that I am truly blessed. Suffering produces endurance. Endurance produces character. Character produces hope. Hope gets us through because of all that the love of God does for us each and every day. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you. We thank you that we can endure. We thank you that we can become strong. And we thank you for that love that never goes away. Please bless us in all that we do, now and always. 